Hi, welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to give you some tips to get smoother burn results. Well, let's get started. Six tips. Tip one, prepare the board. Begin by thoroughly sanding the board with sandpaper that is around 220 grit or higher. Then, lightly mist the board with water. The board should be damp but not soaking wet. Remove any excess water, then allow the board to dry completely. This will allow the grains to raise up on the board. After the board is dried, then sand again to get a super smooth board. The left side of this board has been prepared using the method I just outlined. The right side was left alone. Here is another view of that same board. As I burn on the unsanded side of the board, it feels rough. I'm having a difficult time keeping the burn strokes smooth. Most of that is because the pen tip is encountering a lot of resistance. That makes it much harder to keep consistent pressure as I burn. The sanded side, on the other hand, is much easier to burn on. The pen tip can glide over the surface and is not encountering much, if any, resistance. I am getting much smoother burn results. Here are the two burns. I know they look pretty similar, but the one created on the left, which is the sanded side of the board, was so much easier to do. Adjusting the heat. Before your pen tip ever touches the board, Always make sure you are getting the desired burn color on a scrap board first. Adjust the heat on your burner in low increments until the desired color is achieved. Anytime you switch pen tips or boards, do this exercise all over again because no two pen tips or boards will require the exact same heat setting. I recommend setting your burner to get a result that is one to three shades lighter than the final color should be to account for reburning. On this chart, the green circle is indicating the color that I desire. The yellow arrow is the color that I will set my burner to to allow for reburning. With each of these test burns, I kept increasing the heat setting on my burner. The resulting burns got darker and darker. The heat on this burn was so high that smoke formed. When you burn at higher heats like this, it becomes very difficult to get smooth, consistent results. I highly recommend turning down the heat. Tip 3. Blot and move. Just before you start burning on the board, always blot your pen tip on scrap wood. This will help remove any excess heat and prevent dark blotches from happening. Do the same if you pause from burning. This is what happens if you don't blot first. Once the pen tip comes into contact with the board, keep it moving. Don't pause or rest the pen tip on the board. Tip 4. Hand Pressure and Speed Use a light hand pressure when burning. Keep the pressure consistent or steady throughout the entire burn. Also, move your hand at the same speed throughout the entire burn. Doing both of these things will allow the heat to remain steady and produce more consistent burn results. Using a heavy hand pressure has the opposite effect. The pen tip loses heat quicker so the color isn't constant throughout the burn. Plus, it's pretty common for the hand speed to vary too. Reburning can make the area look better, but it seldom looks as good as what a light hand pressure with a constant speed will produce. So you could really see how the heavy hand pressure used on the right negatively impacts the burning. Tip 5. Burn Direction to get the smoothest burn results, pull the pen tip down towards yourself. It is much easier to keep a consistent hand pressure when burning in this direction. 
avoid burning in a direction where you are pushing the pen tip up and away from yourself. It is much harder to keep a consistent pressure in that direction. Another thing to keep in mind, it is easier to burn with the grain than against it. I am currently burning against the grain, and the results aren't quite as smooth. When possible, burn with the grain for the smoothest results. Tip 6. Overlap and reburn. As you burn, slightly overlap your burn strokes. This will help prevent vertical streaks and or lines from forming. Also, reburn over the area. This will darken up the burn, but it will help hide individual burn strokes, making the area look smoother. Putting it all together. Begin by testing out the burn results on a scrap board. Adjust the heat setting on your burner until the desired result is achieved. Then, before touching the pin tip to the board, blot it on the scrap board to remove any excess heat. Once the pin tip touches the board, keep it moving at a constant speed. Don't pause or allow the pin tip to rest on the board. Pull the pin tip down towards yourself using a light hand pressure. This will allow the heat on the pin tip to remain steady. Keep your hand pressure constant as you burn. This will produce the most consistent results. Make sure you slightly overlap your burn strokes to help prevent streaks and vertical lines from forming. Reburn over the area to further hide individual burn strokes. This will make the area look smoother. It will also darken up the area, which is why I highly recommend setting your burner to produce a color that is one to three shades lighter than what you would want. As I burn, I vary the length of the burn strokes. This prevents a horizontal line from forming. When I extend the color, I begin a stroke a short distance from the end of an existing burn stroke. I do not pause or hesitate in any way when I start burning. Any sort of pause or hesitation would create a small patch of darker color, so it is very important you keep your pen tip moving at all times. It is also important that you keep your pen tip moving at the same speed. I use an easel, and the lip of the easel can make it tough to work along the bottom edge of the board. To counteract this problem, I just rotate the board. Doing this also allows for the burn strokes to be started on the edge of the board. The benefit of that is if any of the burn strokes start out a touch darker than they should be, it won't be as noticeable. Not like it would be if that darker burn was in the middle of the area. I've switched pin tips. There's no reason for this other than to show you you can use any shader to create smooth burning. The first thing I have to do is get the burn results so they are where they should be. Since I'm going to be matching the color of an existing burn, it is very important that the color isn't too dark. In fact, it would be better that it is too light and then use reburning to make it match the existing burn color. When I start burning, I burn adjacent to the existing burn area. This allows me to make sure the color is good. It is okay and preferable that the color is a touch lighter because you can reburn over it to darken it up to match the existing burn. I'm sure that you've noticed the grain line on the board. I am doing my best to avoid burning over that grain line as much as possible. The reason is that grain lines darken up faster than the adjacent wood. Even though I switched pin tips, that doesn't change anything. All of the guidelines or tips that I covered in the tips chapter still apply. Of those tips, I think that using a light and consistent hand pressure are the main key to smooth results. Keeping a consistent hand pressure is easier to do if you are pulling the pin tip down towards yourself. 
Hopefully you've noticed that I have not pushed the pin tip up and away from myself. As I burn, not only do I keep a constant hand pressure, but I also maintain a fairly constant hand speed. Another aspect I think is important is to overlap your burn strokes. This really helps blend or hide individual burn strokes. Reburning will also blend color and hide individual burn strokes, so I highly recommend doing it. In fact, I don't think I've ever created an art project where I haven't employed a lot of reburning. I am almost done with this burn example. Once the area has a layer of color, then I will reburn over the area until I think it matches the color from the previous burn done with the smaller shader pen tip. Fixing Problems With the first problem patch, I will use the edge of a knife to very gently scrape away the excess color on a little blotch. You can use any scraper you want. I happen to like using the X-Acto knife because the small tip allows for precise scraping. Work slow as you do this. The goal is to remove just enough color so that the blotch blends in with the rest of the adjacent burn marks. I only use the scraping method for small areas. It's too time consuming and tedious for larger problems. With this next problem burn, I start by scraping over the dark blotch to lighten it. I don't want the overall color of this burn to be that dark. Grab a shader and turn down the heat on your burner. Then, start reburning over the areas that aren't dark enough. We are doing a targeted reburn, and this method works best if you burn at a lower heat and take your time. Depending on the size of the area you are working in, it might be beneficial to use a smaller shader. Not only do you want to reburn over areas that are too pale, but you also want to avoid burning over areas that are just right. A smaller shader can make it easier to be precise like this. The most important thing is to work slow and to make sure you're burning at a lower heat setting. The slower you are working, the lower the heat should be. These images show the burn patches before and after I fix them. Well, that's it for this video. I hope the information was helpful. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have a lot of written tutorials and free patterns that can also help you learn how to burn. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.